All right. Now, um, I need to warn you. Um, yeah, I need to warn you. You're going to have to pray after this message and see what God wants you to do. You're going to have to pray for wisdom because I'm going to drop some stuff on you. <laughs> no, it's good. It's good. But, um, oh, before I go, um, we sent an e-blast on, in case you're not on our mailing list. Um, Dr. Marilyn Hickey had to postpone because she, um, she's dealing with a blood clot. And so the doctor say, uh, you, you, you're not traveling. So she said, I ain't canceling, Pastor. They just postponed it. So let's believe God for everything to be the way it needs to be. And everything. Praise God. For God's perfect timing. Perfect. Yeah. Amen. And also this week, this is our fast week. Every week, every month, excuse me, we're taking three days to fast and pray and, and, and you know, I don't think I'm doing a good enough job to, uh, in terms of encouraging you to stretch your, your faith, stretch your spiritual muscles. But uh, I'm going to encourage you to do that. And then um, we had a Mr. Daniel passed away this week, little Daniel. And so we're going to have the service on Saturday. So we're going to move our Saturday prayer to Friday. So you'll be hearing more about that. So I want every, I'm, I want about this many people in prayer on Saturday, on Friday, no, Friday. You can come pray on Saturday too. But um, yeah, so we, we're gonna shift some things around. It's gonna be good. Yes, Amen. Amen. Now, say this with me. I am, I am ready, ready to, listen to listen to what God has to say to me. To say to me. Okay. Um, I'm going to continue. Last week I talked about the kryptonite of offense, of offenses. And most of you are familiar with Superman. Some of you probably had a Superman outfit. How many of y'all had some tights and, and, and a t-shirt with a big S and a cape? Don't worry about it. Um, if you didn't have one. How many of y'all, y'all remember, y'all remember how we, how many of y'all drank Kool-Aid when you were growing up? How many of you remember that if you send in five packs? If you send in five packs, you know, after you use them, and, you, and, and with a nickel, five packs and a nickel, they'll send you something back. Y'all remember that? I was, I used to work in Kool-Aid, man. I'd go around the neighborhood, give me your, can I get your Kool-Aid pack? And sometimes, I don't know if you ever got a Superman, but what does that have to do with what you're going to say? Nothing. Not a thing. I just remember that. No. Um, but see all seriousness. And we say that the Superman has some similarity to a Christian. He was from another place. We're from another place. We're born from above. He, um, he, he has supernatural powers, um, and we have supernatural powers. The Bible says greater is he that's in us than he that's in the world, right? And the Bible tells us that he, he the Bible, he was, Superman was not biblical. It was all fiction. But he, he fought evil, you know. We, we don't fight evil, we, de we destroy evil, yes. right? He got his energy from the sun. We get our energy from the sun. Amen. But his Superman's enemies understood something. If you're going to take Superman out, if you're going to defeat him, if you're going to weaken him and make him a non-factor, you got to get your hand on some kryptonite. Kryptonite was the only thing that would cause Superman to be ineffective. Well, that's all fiction. But there is a spiritual kryptonite. Actually, there was about six different kryptonites. The Superman, there was, and the green one was the main one that we know about. But there was like six of them. Last week I told you there's a kryptonite that Christians have to deal with. And if we don't, that kryptonite will reduce us. It will make us weak. It will make us ineffective. And that's not good because Daniel said, they that know their God shall be what? Strong and do what? Exploit like Superman. So, so, so this kryptonite of offense, I'm going to continue today, but it will, it will affect my intimacy with God. They that know their God. You know, Bible used know. It's talking about an intimate 
intimate relationship, not just like, oh yeah, his name is Fred. We're not talking about that. We're talking about intimacy, knowing God. And he said, See, they that know their God, that is close with God, that is intimate with God, they're going to be strong and they're going to do exploit. It is the will of God for us to do exploit. So we started talking about uh, offense. Prior to that, we're talking about the poison of unforgiveness. And so I'm like, Lord, what are you going? He said, I want you to deal with heart issues. See, a lot of us, you know, we want to take new territory. But see, if we can't, if we can't master this territory, Amen. if we can't master within, then we will have, a, will have a hard time with that, which is without. Amen. And so we want to deal with heart he said, deal with the heart issue because those are the things, uh, I'm not reading scripture here in a minute, but those are the things that what was in my heart is what will show up in my life. Yeah. So we want to deal with the heart issue. Why? Because those things are concealed. See, I don't know. Y'all looking good over here. Y'all looking good over here. And uh, this section here, my God. <laughs> the center section, you really got it going on. Cause you know, cause, cause, cause somebody in the section, you know, <laughs> you know, I got to give a little extra over there in the center section. <laughs> but I have no idea what's concealed and what's really driving you. So I want you to listen real good. I'm gonna say some things that might sting a little bit, but how I many you know when you go get a shot? You know, like, hey, doc, put it right there. No, yeah. <laughs> but you know it's going to be good, but you're going to relieve some pain. It depends on what you take. So that's going to be the case here. All right. Now, and I'm going to, I got so much here. I wanna, I'm going to try to stay close to my notes because I have some really powerful things I want to say. All right. I want to go to, I want to go to three scriptures first. Uh, Matthew chapter 12, verse 35, and then Proverbs chapter 4, and then um, Proverbs chapter 4, and then Proverbs chapter 4. So let's go to Matthew 22, because we're talking about this heart. Matthew what? 12. 12. There you go. Now, I'll show one. Just, just, just say, man, okay. <laughs> A good man out of the what treasure of his heart? A good, okay, uh, let's all read, ready? <laughs> a good man out of the good treasure of his heart bring forth what? Good Question, where do good things in your life come from? Okay, let's read on. And an evil man out of the evil treasure bring forth what? So if evil things, if I'm doing evil things, where, they come, where are they coming from? If I'm doing good things, where are they coming from? That makes the heart really important. Okay, let's look at, a, I want to look at another scripture in Proverbs chapter 4. I wanted to read it out of three different translations. Proverbs 4.23 says, keep your what? Heart with all diligence, for out of it springs the issues of life. And that's, that's, that's kind of a companion scripture with the one we just read over there in Matthew. See, he said, keep your heart. Guard it, keep it. Keep it. You know, keep it. Don't let just anything float around or come into your heart. Why? Because what gets in there is going to show up in your life. Amen. What's in there is going to shape your life. What's in there is going to uh, uh, direct your life. Okay, next uh, version, please. Amplify Keep and guard your heart with all vigilance and above all that you guard. For out of it flows the springs of life. Guard your heart. Next version, please. Guard your heart above all else, for it determines the course of your life. Wow. Your heart does. Not your head. Not what you learned at the university. It's what's in your heart. So... So I want to talk a little bit more about your heart and not just your heart, but we talk talking about offenses. And I want to kind of I want to ask you a question and not ask you a question. I want to read something to you. Now, as a Christian, you already know what you should do um, 
when somebody crosses you, offends you, hurts you, whatever you want to call it. You already know what you're supposed to do, right? Right. In case you don't know, <laughs> you're supposed to ask the Lord to forgive them, you know, forgive you for your wrong attitudes, help you change so you can see people um, the way God sees them, right? right? So after you forgive them, you post the whatever, uh, pray for them, right? And then, and if possible, you try to communicate with them so that you can clear stuff up so you can be reconciled, right? right. That's what you should do. <laughs> right, that's what you should do. <laughs> but your flesh don't want no part of that. You hurt me, I want you to hurt. You hurt me, I want you to hurt too. We'll pray, we'll pray. But I want to pray after you even got hurt. I want you to su I suffer, you suffer. Yeah, I want you to suffer, I want your cat to suffer. <laughs> okay, and now I know that sounds a little comical, and you would never say those things out of your, some of y'all would. But, but isn't that the natural response? The natural response is, I'm not, trying to, I'm not trying to get no mercy on you. I'm not trying to bless you. Because the Bible said, bless those. Didn't it? Send blessing. Lord, Lord, I, <laughs> Lord, I bless them. You know, you try to get out of the way, I bless them. No, no, no. Go ahead and release that thing. That's, that's, what, that's what God tells you to do. Now, we talked about this a couple of weeks ago, that the reason I can do that and the reason God asked me to do it, according to Romans 5, 5, the love of God has been shed abroad in my heart. He said, he said don't do it with your natural love. So the natural love is why, is why folks in divorce courts. Because the natural love will be fine today, and it'll be mean as a rattlesnake by Wednesday. You did this to me. Uh, see, rat natural love is what caused people to do some, some stuff to people. So God said, I'm going to put my love in you. Amen. And I want you to use that. <laughs> What's up, y'all look at me like, oh, yeah, right. I, I'm going to put my love in you, and I want you to use that to forgive them. Now remember, he said, guard your heart. Because if I don't forgive, some contamination is going to start flowing into my heart. If I hold grudges, if I want to get even, if I want something bad to happen to them, something now is seeping into my heart. Every time I see them, you, know, I can't, I, you make me sick just seeing, just seeing your car in the parking lot. Now something, something's working there. And it's getting in your heart. And, and I want to, by the time we leave today, we're going to have our hearts fixed. Or, or you, you, just, you know, just walk out of here with your heart messed up. <laughs> no. See, you know, there's an African proverb that says, where there's no enemy within, the enemy outside can do me no harm. Amen. Well, I wish, yeah. Now, I'm going to say some things that's going to kind of be radical, but nonetheless, we can do this. I tell you what, in the last 72 hours, you know, see, you think you won't be a preacher. Man, the last 72 hours, I had to practice all this. I had to practice all this. All this. I'm like, okay, Reverend, what you say is, <laughs> I had to practice all this. The last 72 hours. Some of the last, what, 10 hours? 10 hours. What time is it now? Huh? 11.20. So that's, how many hours was that? Everybody up. <laughs> Except him, he sleep. Everybody up. And I, had, and I had to get ready to come and minister the word of the Lord. Glory. Praise him. With my mad self. <laughs> but my point, but it's okay. It's okay. It's okay. Watch this. You going to have some tests too. All oh, this is testable. You can sit, now you sit up here and shout, hallelujah, amen, yeah. But when somebody cross you 
And like I told you, before, I think last week, your, your, your offense, it normally it's not going to come from somebody out there that don't know you. Because either they can't, they, they, you're like, whatever. But it's going to be somebody you invested in, somebody you trusted in, somebody you, 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 you walk with, somebody you, you put some stuff on hold for you so that they can advance. And they're going to get amnesia. And they're going to act like you never existed. And then so they can look good, they'll tell lies on you. And, and all that's going to happen. But God said, I know it's going to happen. Remember, Jesus said it's impossible that offenses don't come. But, 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 is how you deal with them. Now, oh, yeah. Okay, now go to Ephesians 5. Now we're going to get into some new stuff that um, this, uh, um, I got to slow down because I got to make sure the, the spoon is not too big that I give you so you can put this in your mouth and, and take it. Now, okay, so we know we should forget those people, right? Yeah, so. Uh, everybody say offense. offense. Now listen to this. The offense that's left unchecked will form a root of bitterness that will eventually affect your life, every aspect of it. An offense that's left unchecked and yeah. dealt with. Yeah. Oh, okay, Lord, yeah. Yeah, an offense that's unchecked and not dealt with is going to form a root of bitterness that will touch every aspect of your life until that thing mm. is cut off. Some of you in here today, and this is what I pray to, that you're going to be forced to deal with some stuff that you've been ignoring for a long time. Amen. Oh, no, I'm good. You're not good. <laughs> you've just been ignoring it. And I'm, I'm going to convince you, you better deal with that because yeah. it's going gonna, it's gonna to cause something to grow in you deep. That it's going to spring up at the most opportune time. And not just an opportune time, it's anytime somebody piss you, I mean, make you upset. Amen. Can I be myself today? Yeah, yeah. I, I'm, I'm, you know, we, we, I think we got a master's degree. We got a master's or doctorate in this. Pretty close, okay. Yeah. Okay, so... Um, Ephesians chapter 5, I mean chapter 4. God is so into relationship, it's not even funny. And we talk about this, and this is where we're going to go right now. He, he's really into the saints of God's relationship. Remember all those, how we, those one another scriptures? How we love one another, be kind one to another, pray one for another, uh, prefer one another. God is really, really into relationships. Some of the hardest relationship to navigate a lot of time is, is relationship with other saints. You know why? Because the devil gets right. He does not want that to get to the place where it's covenant relationship. And what I want to tell you, there's people God brings into your life. There's people that's assigned to you by God. And the devil like, no, no, no. I, I'm going to do everything I can to disrupt that, to break that, to, to pervert that. Everything I can. Why? Because if they ever tap into this, this one another uh, realm that God has for them, they will be unstoppable. Yes. Somebody said Christian marriages, uh, there's as many divorces as the world. Why, why is that? Because that's a covenant relationship, especially if you get married, uh, ho uh, make it a holy matrimony. Oh, yeah. oh. Ephesians chapter 4. Y'all ready? Yeah. Okay. Therefore, putting, putting away lying. Man. What a way to start, Pastor. Well, <laughs> let each one of you speak truth with his neighbor. Watch this, in case you don't know who he's talking about. For we are members of one another. So he's talking to the saints. Amen. And he's saying there's a challenge, major challenge for believers to be 
to speak truth one to another. Now, I had to go to, to a couple of Greek scholars. How many know the Bible, the New Testament was written in Greek? And the Greek is an expressive language that, that English, we, we, we're limited, but Greek used several words to convey um, thoughts and, and, and meaning that the Holy Spirit has. We'll use the word one way, and we're like, okay, that's what we think it means, or that's what it means to us. But we have to go back now to when Paul was writing this and see what he was talking about. So if you would permit me. Okay, thank you. That's nice of you. So now this, this, this first word, he says, uh, uh, lion. Put away what? Lion. Now the scholar said what this really means is dishonesty. Not like, man, I was, uh, I was playing I was playing a point guard with uh, the Warriors last night. You lying. You lying. That ain't true. <laughs> okay, that's lying. But he's talking about dishonesty one with another. How you doing, Pat? You good? Okay. You happy? You okay with me? I'm good. Okay. And see, that's what we normally say. I'm just using this example. She, she didn't know. We didn't rehearse this. A lot of time we say, I'm good, and we're dishonest. Oh, boy, we're going to have to work today, Liam. <laughs> a lot of time we say, hey, uh, 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 Dar Darren, Darren, you good? You good with your parents? And, and a lot of times... <laughs> <laughs> he like, I ain't trying to play, Pastor. Go get somebody else. Get somebody else. I, I can tell, tell by that nod. He's like, <laughs> I got you, man. I got you. I got you. I got you. I be trying to flow with who I pick out on, but I can tell about it. Yeah, I'm, I'm, yeah. But anyway, but don't feel bad, bro. Hey. Hey, bro. Hey, bro. There's a whole lot of us in here. That's acting. The church is full of actors. Full of actors. And we act like I'm good with you. And I act, and you, you, I know, you, you know, you offended me, but, but I won't come to you. And if I see you, I gotta see you at church. Cause you're usher. I gotta see you behind. So, okay, let me pump the brakes a little bit. For now, no. But this is this is this is this is how we live, and this is Paul. See, Paul, all of Paul's letters, all of them, he dealt with lying. It wasn't like they were saying, "I was a point guard for the world." Boy, you lying? No, it wasn't that kind of lying. It was dishonesty. It was dishonesty, and he every letter he wrote, he dealt with lying in the church because the church is full of actors. We act like you know. <laughs> We act like, you good, man? Yeah, I'm good. Well, you know, I know I said something. Yeah, it's all good. Yeah, I'm good. You sure? You? I said I'm good. Okay, okay, all right, okay, okay. I'm going to show you why that kind of stuff comes up. Same way, you know, I don't understand it, but, you know, I mean, I've been with the same woman for 40 years. We went through this. But the last thing... The last thing the devil wants you to do is have strong relationship with other saints. Amen. And Paul's saying, quit lying one to another. We're all the same. Amen. I want to show you today why, why we got to get out of that, why we got to get out of that. So Paul's exhortation, and uh, he talked a lot about lying, but he talks a lot about Honesty, being honest. Why? Because when we pretend that everything is okay, but inwardly, we're actually offended and wounded. When we're inwardly wounded, see, that's, that's not easily seen. And, and it's got to be done with, and I'm, I'm about to put something on you, because see, this ain't nothing the preacher can fix. Amen. Inwardly wounded person has the sole responsibility to deal with that, to check it, and to get it healed. That's your responsibility. It's not mine. It's your responsibility. First of all, I don't even know what that because we're what? Acting. 
thing. You know, you ever you ever see you ever like, have your favorite show and and you know it's some you know some 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 people they act and they're the star whatever and you just see them in that role, and if you're not careful, you start thinking that's the way they are. That's why that's why when people when actors like trip out, they're like, oh man, I can't. He was so nice. No, he was what? Yeah. But we act. We act like it's good when inwardly we're hurting, wounded. And that's why Jesus said, oh, forgive, don't be offended. Why? Because, because I'm about to show you why. Because, because if you don't get healed from that, the offense is the trap that stops you. It's what happens if you stay in that trap. I'll never forget, a few years ago, in my garage, I was out there in the garage six years ago, and uh, I saw this spider web. It's amazing how quick they can make those things. And so I saw this spider web out there, and I was going to go knock it down. But then I saw this bug in there. He went, shh. And then he was like, oh, man, let me get out of here. I said, like, yeah, you better get out of here, because them, them spiders are going to come. I'm talking to the bug. <laughs> so and, and the more he, guess what happened? He got entangled. It's a yoke of bondage. And when he got entangled and couldn't move anymore, guess who came? <laughs> you don't like spiders? Okay. Anyway, spiders came, they had lunch. That's the way it is with an offense. It's a trap. And the more you're like, I'm good. I'm good. I'm all right. Well, and pastor just preached about offense giving. I'm good, pastor. I'm good. Let pastor, pastor handle his own house. And the more we let it go unchecked, the more entangled we get. And so God is one another. All right. So, so the church is full of actors. And so they think that not discussing the issue that bothers them, that they're being spiritual. But this silent spirituality is not the answer. Come on, Pastor Friendly, preach. Okay, I'm sure will, brother. <laughs> silent spirituality is not the answer. It leads to fostering of hostile attitudes, yeah. resentment attitudes, yeah. and a hard heart toward people. Yeah. Most people choose to grin and bear it and think that by ignoring their hurt, it will somehow go away. I remember I had an issue with a friend of mine, and uh, I, you know, I said, "Hey, bro, you, 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 you wrong. You just wrong." And uh, and this is what he told me. He said, "Well, hey, time will heal it." I said, "Well, if time heals, God is not necessary." The Bible said, God said, he, he will restore you and heal you of your wounds. In Psalm 23, he said, he said, he said I will restore your soul. So something had to happen for me to need restoration. Something had to happen for me to heal the wound. Time doesn't heal the wound. Time allows that thing to fester and to grow and to grow, to, to grow deep. Time doesn't heal anything. So not dealing with it doesn't make it go away. Boy, I'm talking. I can tell. I can tell. The Holy Ghost. And I want you to let whatever you've been ignoring today is the day. I wish I had a big old garbage bag, a garbage pail, and let everybody come in here and dump it in the trash can. All right. So... Like I said, I got so if time heals, we wouldn't need God. And that's why God tells us how to fix this. Um, so what does time do to the offense? It allows the offense to hide. It allows the offense to hide. Watch this. 
deep, deep in our souls. Deep in our souls. Until something else happens. And then that offense, you know what that offense will do? It'll come out screaming. Ha! It'll start screaming. That's why you, that's why y'all always do, people always do this to me. They always do this. Well, I wasn't even there. I know, but, but see, see, it just always happened to me. It's always somebody, it's somebody, yeah. That offense starts screaming. And then if you close to them, like, dang, where did that come from? It's deep. The offense doesn't go away. It, 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 it drills down and it hides. You ever, you ever deal with something and something comes up and you're like, God, I thought I was over that. Amen. No, it was just hidden Amen. for a while. Yeah. And that's why God said, deal with it immediately. Amen. Why? Because if you don't, it's going gonna, it's gonna, it's gonna to hide. Amen. And that's why, oh, Lord. That's why, you know, I'm not, you know, I ain't, I'm not mad at nobody. I'm not, I love everybody. I got to. I want to. No, no, relevant. because what I'm about to say, I don't want you to take it personal. But people that have been married like four or five times, there's a reason for that. See, if you don't, if you don't correct what happened the first time, right. it'll get hidden. And see, every relationship goes through several, several stages. You, you remember me talking about this. There's the ecstasy stage. Where have you been all my life? <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> You got to, you got to be hurting because you fell from heaven. <laughs> That's the ecstasy stage, right? Everything good, everything. Even your phone, even your phone number got, a, your phone number got my numbers in it. You know, people do that with churches. Oh my God, this is the awesome, most awesomest church I've ever seen in my life. I've been looking for a church like this until pastor do something human or say something human. Then they're like, you know what, see, he tripping. <laughs> I know how it is. So, but every relationship's that way. You, you go from ecstasy to the reality. And that's when you really get down to business. Have a good fight. Yeah, break up about four or five times. <laughs> and then you get down to business. Okay, this is reality. Well, in the process of that, in the process of discovering yourself, I gotta, okay, this seems to be a tendency. Yeah. I need to deal with this. Yeah. Why? Because all I'm gonna do is bring it over here. Yeah. It's gonna be hidden for a while until I get over here, and it may be four or five years, but, but you know, you hit that button, bam, there it is. Amen. All because it wasn't dealt with. Amen. We good? All right. Now, I want, I want you sitting there. Like I said, you listen to this one for yourself. Amen. Okay? Don't, don't listen to this. You know, um, <laughs> okay. So, um, so when it starts screaming, that's your signal that you have never really dealt with that thing. That's your signal. And you never really got over it. You just covered it up holding on to resentments and offenses make you a prisoner in your own mind and in your own emotions. This is, now we're not talking about anybody else, we're talking about right here, right? Okay, now, um, let's go to Hebrews chapter 12. So Paul told him, quit lying, be, be honest, quit being dishonest, yeah. So all the stuff we've been trying to ignore, we're going to deal with it today. Amen. Well, Pastor, it's kind of difficult being honest. You, 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 you want to know what's difficult? <laughs> Pastor, it's difficult being honest. I know. But what difficult is being tormented by this bitterness, being tormented. By this, by, this, by, by this thing dominating me, every time I try to make two steps forward because I didn't deal with it, it's, it's, it's anchored in me and it's holding me back. That's what's difficult. Amen. Be honest and move on. Mm -hmm. <laughs> All right. 
Is the Holy Spirit talking to you? You know what? He talking to me this morning. I'm like, oh, Lord, I got to deal with that. That's one thing I like about old girl here. Old girl here. <laughs> My wife. Is because she'll tell me in a minute. You know, she has every right. She has she has carte blanche. And stuff. I, I, and we just, you know, we just we just talk. We still love each other. Amen. But we, we talk. Amen. Okay. You wrong there. I am. Yeah. Okay, I'll fix it. It ain't like next month. Or how can I make this right? Amen. Yeah. I know how I think I want to make it right, but you the one brought it up. How do, how do you want it to be right? What's right for you? Yeah. You know, that, that used, I never, my mother taught me something years ago when um, I used to buy her gifts, right? I used to love, I said, Mom, I'm going to buy you this, I'm going to buy you this. And, uh, you know, and I, I thought, you know, I thought the bigger, the more expensive, the better. And uh, I bought her something. She said, baby, <laughs> you know, my mother didn't have a filter uh, with her boys. She said, listen, I appreciate all that, but I ain't going to do nothing with that. If you just send me two pounds of Starbucks coffee and throw in some Snickers, I'll be one happy. I'm like, really? I'm here. I'm trying to buy her an automatic, uh, well, she didn't have a wash washing machine. She, I, don't, I, don't, I, I like hanging my stuff on that line. Y'all don't know nothing about no line. Okay, okay, we do. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I said, see, when I was growing up, mama hanged up on the line, and my friend come by and say, Pastor, I mean, hey, kid, I didn't know y'all had parachutes in the house. Kids ain't right. Kids ain't right. Uh, some of y'all some of y'all know what I'm talking about. Kids, but they come to school. I saw some parachutes at Friendly's house. <laughs> Let me stop. Okay. That's your comic relief. That's your break. So the, <laughs> uh, okay, let's get to Hebrew chapter 12 because I, I want to make sure I get this in. <laughs> uh, my neighborhood was something. You can hang stuff out there. Ain't nobody going to take it. <laughs> Hebrew chapter 12 because I'm serious. Verse 14. Watch this. Pursue peace with a few people that you like. God, Lord, he said, go after it. Pursue it. Look for it. Find a way to make it work. With all people and holiness, without which no one will see the Lord. Looking carefully, lest anyone fall short of the grace of God. Lest any root of bitterness springing up cause trouble. And by this, many are defiled. Yeah. Okay. Now, um, looking carefully. King James says looking diligently. Now, what that word means is to look over and to take supervisory oversight. Wow. Yeah. yeah. To take supervisory oversight. Now, he's telling you, look diligently. And that word is also used in First, Second Timothy about a bishop. That a bishop, a bishop is a person that has, has churches under him, and he has oversight of the churches, and he's responsible for the health of the churches. And 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 when something goes wrong in that church, they call him, Bishop. You you need to fix this. Your churches. He has oversight. He's telling us here to to look carefully or diligently, lest any man fall of the grace of God. So what this is telling me is my oversight, I have oversight, I have responsibility, like this bishop, for what goes or comes inside of me. Amen. Okay, now here's where we get friendly. You're responsible for what develops inside of you. Well, my daddy didn't do that. You're responsible. I mean, because you're 47 now. 
or 27. Yes. See, he says, be, be diligent, take the oversight. You're responsible for what, for what takes residence in your head, Amen. what takes residence in your heart. He Amen. said, you're responsible. It's not what folk did to you. See, you can't stop what people do to you. Yeah. You can't control what people, you can just be having a great day and just minding your business. Got your eight hours of sleep, but all of a sudden, you get one phone call. It doesn't even take a, one phone call can rock your world, right? But you determine how deep that gets. You determine if it will go from your head down to your heart. You determine. You determine how much that divorce cripples you. You determine how much, because now, now you're going to penalize the person God sent to you. You'll penalize them and run them off. Slow down. Okay. I'm responsible. My wife, you, I heard her, she's the person I've heard say it. And I'm like, God, dog. I said, well, I don't know. But now I know she, she was right as usual. She told somebody, and they just did her wrong. I like, I don't like it when people do my woman wrong. I'm a protector. I don't care who it is. I remember I snatched Kenneth when he was young. I was like, boy, don't you ever. I came up on him like a bunion, man. He thought, <laughs> he thought that uh, he didn't know I was around. Man, don't let, your, don't let your children talk to their mama and your wife any kind of way. That's craziness. Anyway, what was I talking about? <laughs> huh? No, I'm past that. What was I, I mean before that? See, y'all don't be listening. Y'all gotta help me. What? Oh, yeah, well, she said, you're right. Okay, okay, Darlene, Darlene, you're right. Major. See, Major gotta pay attention. But she said, uh, she told this lady, I'm not responsible for you because you just lay fell all apart like a two dollar watch. And after she did what she did, they said, I'm not responsible for your feelings, baby. I'm like, I don't know about that. And then, then you know, I'm a little slow. I'm a little slow. But I realized that's true. All this out here, I can't control. I mean, it happened, I just said, the last 72 hours. I'm like, I am not going to get caught up in that. And so, and so, 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 I have oversight over if I'm going to worry, if I'm going to be in fear, I have oversight. If I'm going to lose my mind because my children did something human, I have oversight. Because somebody at the church did this or said this, or, I have oversight. I determine, excuse me, I determine, I determine. I determine where that's going to go. Amen. I determine that. Amen. I determine that. Amen. I determine that. Amen. I can't determine what happened to you. I can determine what I'm going to do. I can't, de- I can't make you believe Jack, but I know what I can make myself believe. And, and I, I, I determine I'm not going to let anybody offend me. Now, it stings, but I'm not going to let it get down here. I have to process some stuff and all of that, but I'm 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 gonna cut it off. Here's why. Whew. Jesus. All right. Okay. Um. He talks about this root of bitterness. Look at verse 15. Looking carefully, lest anyone fall short of the grace of God, lest any root of bitterness springing up, springing up cause trouble. So, God holds us responsible for whether or not we allow offense to take roots. God holds us responsible. He holds us responsible. If you're dealing with some stuff right now, it ain't going to just go away. God's not even going to come in there and pull it out. You have to deal with it. And notice it says springing up. Offense doesn't overwhelm you all at once. It's like a little tender plant that just bursts through through the soil. And you see, ah, oh, wow, it's growing. But guess what else is growing? It's growing because, the, because beneath the soil is the root that's applying life to that thing. And so sometimes a fence starts growing, but, but the root is applying life to it. You, don't, you can cut off the, the, the new growth, but it's going to come back. It's going to spring up again. You got to go and deal with that root so that you can be done with that thing forever. Amen. So God holds us responsible. 
He holds me responsible. He holds you responsible for what grows, for what takes root in your mind, for what takes root in what happened back to you back in 85. Well, that woman did me wrong. I know. But are you, she, she ruined your life back there. You gonna let her re, re, ruin it now? You had, a, you had a bad day there. You gonna let her continue to give you bad days? You responsible. I know folks don't like to shout about being responsible, but. <laughs> ah. Okay, listen to it. It is that inside part of you. That's the part you can control. Amen. And God holds you responsible for that. God holds you responsible for it. I say God is holding you responsible for it. Amen. You're the only one that can get permission for those attitudes to take residence in your mind and in your emotions. Yes. Remember we talked about how sometimes people would let stuff just rent space in their head. You can't, uh-uh. I'm responsible for what I allow to take residence in my life. Okay, so you can choose whether or not irritation turns to anger. And if you determine whether anger turns into wrath, you determine whether wrath turns into bitterness or resentment. You determine that. Okay. If you're filled with bitterness, resentment, and unforgiveness, you permitted it. You permitted that seed, that destructive seed. You permitted that destructive seed to go down and grow. Amen. The offense is a seed. I call your name, oh my own God, feeling in there. And then, then you, you dismiss that seed. You cast that seed out. But if you're mad right now, if you're angry right now with something that happened, if you have resentment and anger and all of that in you right now, you let that seed grow. I know. Okay, Pastor, I thought you were going to lift us up. I'm lifting you up. I, I think it was a great day when I found out I'm the problem. Because you know what? What? Because I can fix it. Boy, this class is good. This class over on this side, they, they bad. Yeah, yeah, I want to know, am I the problem? Because I, I can't fix you. You can't fix me. I want to find out. I hope I'm the problem with everything because I can fix me. Right, right. Isn't that good? Yeah. But it's the truth. Because if you're the problem, I can't fix you. I can just pray. Rebe, be, be, gotcha. <laughs> All I can do is pray for you and then hope you listen to God. Yeah. But if I'm the problem, I can fix that thing before 12 o'clock. Yeah. Or 1 o'clock. I can fix it. Yeah. This is good. Now, I, I need you to, 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 to let this sink in and, and maybe even get the tape. Okay, so at the moment, you have a choice whether or not you're going to let it sink in, right? Amen. Now, <laughs> Ooh. Mm -hmm. I don't want to, okay, I'm going to have to deal with that. Let me read something to you. Uh, I'm running out. Because I want to get to this part. How do I know if I got an offense? Y'all want me to, can I talk about that? Yes. Hold on, let me find it. Okay, no, well, no, that's not where I want to go. Okay. Hebrew 12 shouts, if you don't stop these attitudes, they will eventually trouble you. You know what it says? It will trouble you. The word trouble you means to harass and to annoy you. S something inside that bothers you and upsets you so much that you constantly are pestered by the thoughts of it. Wow. Wow. What you allow to take root will fester inside and become a major nuisance to your peace, keeping you upset and emotionally torn up all the time. Wow. 
when you hear about the person that offended you being blessed. You wonder, how could God possibly bless them after all the ugly stuff they did to me? If you're thinking that, you you, you offended. <laughs> ah, okay. Mm-hmm. No, I, it, it is. I mean, we, we go through that. When you see them, you know, you see a person, I'm telling you, it's the last 72 hours. <laughs> I'm preaching this anyway. Amen. I passed the test, so I passed the test. So, um, all right. How do you know when you're upset? You're still upset even though you think you got past it. Mm, I don't want to say that yet. Okay, um, no, no, that's not it. How do you know? Well, you make derogatory statements about people a lot. Yeah. You got a root of bitterness. Amen. If you're constantly making derogatory statements about, especially an issue over and over for sure, but you have derogatory, you find some derogatory to say about somebody, but I don't even want to go there. Somebody that hurts you, let's, let's stay with them. And every time, every opportunity you get to say something derogatory, yeah, I know, I know they're gifted, but let me tell you this. If somebody says something good, you're going to, yeah, but. Let me tell you this, you offended, and that thing has grown roots, and until you cut that thing off, it's going gonna, it's gonna to spring up and cause trouble. You, 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 know, you know about roots, you, you, you have roots, and like trees, especially trees, and, and let's say you're going to put a shed up or something, you know, you're going to put a shed up, and the shed is going like 20 feet, 30 feet from the house, and you start digging, and you... God, dog, what was that? The tree is 30, 40 feet over here. But you just hit a what? Root. And that root then grew way over here under the ground. You can't see it. But it's concealed and it's working. See, I can have, oh, I can have some issues with her. But that root can grow over here. How you treat my mama like that? I had that root, and I, I got delivered right here at this altar. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay, I got a few minutes, and I'm, I'm going to hit it and quit it. But it's so, it's so apropos. I, I, and I didn't know it. I, my own preaching, I got convicted of my own preaching. I hated my father. I hated him with a passion. I hated him. And so, so what he did, that root, that root started affecting me as a, as a grown man. And I'm like, well, how come I can't? How, why is it so hard for me to? That? And God said, you got to let that go, player. Amen. Well, I'm like, what? I forgave him. I forgave him. <laughs> But we're full of what? Actors. Listen, I'm preaching. I'm the preacher. I'm out here looking like it's all good. And God said, you, that's what I'm saying. The stuff you've been ignoring, don't, today, today, yes. let the Holy Ghost get that Amen. thing and, and roof that thing up. Yes. And you ain't got to tell anybody about it. That's the thing, this is you. I mean, but, but, but whatever you notice there, and ask the Holy, Holy Spirit, show me, show me. Why do I keep dealing with, why am I losing friends? <laughs> why, why is this, why does this, this seem to be a pattern? What's going on? It can't be all these people. Wow. Wow. Why is my child acting like, acting like they, they're deaf, they can't hear? Why, what's blocking this, 
this exchange, the root saps energy. It takes energy for that root to grow, and that 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 root, and and well, the, that's a bad one. It it will it will affect the growth, but it 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 you can't you can cut that off. I'm done. I'm done with that. I forget. Yeah, but then you did you kill the root because a lot of times we just cut stuff off the surface, and it does what? It pop right back up. All right. Okay, y'all ready to go? No. <laughs> hmm. You have any negative thoughts about people pestering you? Is there something inside that bothers and upsets you so much that you like, I don't even want to talk about that? Think about that. I don't want to talk about that. Why? Is this bothering you so much you don't want to talk about it? That's an indication that um, something has grown there. Something has sprung up. That bad seed is trying to take root or has taken root. All right. So you lose your peace, you'll lose your peace, you'll forfeit your joy, and you'll toss aside your victory if you don't take the path that I'm talking about in dealing with this. And it costs you too much. It costs too much with your walk with God. I'm, I'm going to go ahead and shut it down right here. It will cost you too much with your walk with God. And so all through the scripture, Jesus said, no. First, he said, woe unto those that, that, that offends you. God will deal with those who offend you. Amen. And God will deal with you if you ignore dealing with the offense. Amen. We're going to take new territory. What we want to do, we want to be free to move in God. I want to encourage you today. Allow the Spirit of God to talk to you, but also you be man or woman enough. Man or woman enough. Because this, you know, I mean, you don't have to do it. You can do what you want to do. But I'm talking about this impacts your walk with God. I don't want any weight. The Bible said lay aside every sin and the weight that, that besets you or sets you back. Those of you that say, I need to, be, I should be further along than this. Okay, check and see what's holding me back, what offense, um, what I thought I did, what I thought I did too. Just deal with it and drop it and move on. Amen. Well, you're going to look weak, whatever. Amen. Whatever. Whatever. So, I'm going to pray and then we can go home. I've already forgiven everybody in here. So, so you don't have to, Pastor, I need you to forgive me. I already forgave you. <laughs> no, I, I'm, I, I, I'll tell you, man, there's a liberty. I'm probably one of the freest cats <laughs> you'll ever find. I, don't, I just don't let, I don't let anybody disturb amen, my peace. Amen. Nobody, Pete, amen. nobody. Amen. It'll sting a minute, but I, I, I'll get my equilibrium back, amen. and I'll just keep on strutting. Because yes, if you can walk up to me and cook, <laughs> anyway. That was that was minor. Thank you, Lord. I know who I am. I'm good. I'm good. Y'all ready to pray? Now, I'm going to pray. And man, I'm excited about the potential because there can be some some springing forth in your life, and it's almost like. You know, being being in a starting block and they're holding you. You know you're about to run, but they keep holding you. You see, the gun is about to go off, yeah. and you're about to sprint, and you're going to run with a freedom you never had before or hadn't had in a long time. Some people are going to get healed and made whole. Some of you, the devil going to be like, no, 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 don't listen to him. That ain't right. 
And you're going to be like, no, it's too late, man. Praise God. Let's pray and let's, let's release this thing today. Father, we do thank you. We thank you for the wisdom of God. We thank you for the word of God. And we thank you for the love of God. Lord, we can't do any of this without you. But we thank you that it's you who that work in us to will and to do your own good pleasure. Okay, uh, um, I'm going to pray this prayer because there's a lot of parents in here and your children have hurt you. They've hurt you. You've been hurt and offended. You're offended by your children because of their behavior, because of the sacrifices you made, and they just kind of like, whatever. That's what you're supposed to do. You're my parent. You're supposed to sacrifice for me. And they show no appreciation. They, sh they show no responsibility, and they're waiting on you to bail them out again. You can't do that. But here's what I want you to do. I want you to get your heart healed. You get your heart healed and then stand your ground and you'll see God show out. Not only in your life, but you'll have strength to deal with them. I want to pray for the parents first. If, uh, obviously there's something here because God just stopped me to do this. And it's amazing because we, we don't consider it an offense because, well, I'm the parent, I should do this and I should be there for him. You're there for him. You're there for him. Thank you, Lord. And the power of God will flow better for them when you get out of that offense. Thank you, Jesus. Father, I pray for every parent or caregiver here this morning that has, that has been offended by the behavior of their children, by the hurt that their children has, has um, man, has inflicted upon them, however it happened. I pray in the name of Jesus that they would receive that they would receive, and not just receive, but that they would, they would go to that root and cut it off. That they would receive your power. It's already there that they would exercise your power in their lives because, because that guilt is holding them captive. That guilt is holding them in a place where now the child has the upper hand of authority and you never intended for it to be that way. So I pray in Jesus' name that every parent is released from that hole. I pray that every parent put the, the ax to that root of bitterness. My God, I pray that in the name of Jesus that the child would come to themselves, that they would understand that, that their God-ordained covering, that their God-ordained covering is for their own good. We pray that in the name of Jesus. If you're a child, if you're in here and you've inflicted some stuff on your parent and you make the parents stay up at late, night, late at night, you need, to, you need to repent and ask them to forgive you and ask them to, 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 to and let them know, listen, I, I'm receiving, I'm receiving from you. There's an anointing on your life, mom, dad, to, to cover my life. That's why the Bible says you dishonor them, it's not going to go well with you. It's not going to go well with you. Your girlfriend may like you, but it's not going to go well with you. And she better not hook up with you because it ain't going to go well with her. That's why I said honor, though. Honor. Honor. Thank you, Lord. I pray for every marriage in here now. Hallelujah. I pray for every marriage. I pray. No, let me back up. I'm going to pray for every person that was divorced because a lot of times that divorce thing carries over. In the name of Jesus, whatever fractured those relationships, fractured those covenant relationships, in the name of Jesus, release it, get forgiveness of it, re release the other person, and move on about your business. It's over. What they said, what they did, they did. But what you need to do is allow God to help you move forward. What they did is what they did. Don't let them ruin another decade. Don't let them ruin another year of your life being so consumed with what they did and, and quit talking about it. Let that, get that out of your conversation. Yeah, Whatever you talk about, you bring about. I'm, I had in here, you know, you need to confront, hallelujah, we need to confront issues. You can't change what you don't confront. You can't. Confrontation is God's way to preserve relationships. We need to confront this mess. Thank you, Lord. All right. 
Now, for every marriage, Father, I pray in the name of Jesus for everything that's unspoken, everything that's, that's buried, and buried until something comes up, and then all of, here come all of that stuff. Father, I pray in Jesus' name, just like you throw our stuff in the sea of forgetfulness, I pray that people would not hold grudges and acts against saying stuff like, I wouldn't be in this situation if it wasn't for you. God got you. God got you. And as you get free from that, man, you'll be like Solomon. God is like, what do you want? Yeah. And he'll even let you let them live long enough. And then you'll want to say, you won't say, you'll want to say, you won't say, you'll want to say, how do you like me now? That's what God will bring you to. Ha. Ah, thank you, Father. I pray for every, every single man, every single young lady, in the name of Jesus, that you will move forward in your life, free from every encumbrance. Maybe your friend bailed on you. You were there for them like nobody's business, and all of a sudden they went south on you. It happens. Let it go, bury it, drop it. If you haven't already confronted, say, hey, this is not cool. Confront it, but let it go. Jesus said, go to them. Fix it. Have a conversation. Define that relationship. DT, define that relationship. Jesus didn't say time will heal it. Define it. Thank you, Lord. If you desire to be married, please, please get all that crap out. The person you want to get married to does not deserve to have to deal with Sinead's mess or Billy Bob's mess. Let Billy Bob have all his mess and let Sinead have all her mess and you, you, you and your man or you and your woman, y'all start your own new mess, but don't bring anybody else's mess into it. And Father, I pray for this church. Paul, you said, <laughs> well, not Paul, but I'm not praying to Paul. Paul said in his scripture, all through the scriptures, he talked about relationships, being honest. Father, I pray that all of us would have a desire for honesty. You said speak the truth in love, not being dishonest, not being a bunch of actors. I pray in Jesus' name that all the acting, all the actors just go on the unemployment line in here. That we speak to one another in love, even when it doesn't feel good, even when it doesn't sound good, because they love me, they'll tell me the truth. Father, I pray and ask you to lift off of this congregation every barrier to the love of God that flows and wants to flow in here. I pray that in the name of Jesus. I want you to say this with me. We're going to ask the Holy Spirit to help us to put his finger on stuff that I've been ignoring. You ready? Say this with me. Father, in Jesus' name. I respond to the word that I heard today. I thank you for the liberty that's coming forth. Now, whoever I need to talk to, I ask you to go ahead of me and touch their hearts so that they can hear my heart. Holy Spirit, you're my helper. You're the one who guides me into all truth. Show me what I've been ignoring. Help me deal with everything that I've allowed to go deep down into my soul. I want to be free. In Jesus' name, I thank you for that. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. 
Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Yes, Lord. Yes, yes, yes. Yes, we're fixing that. Yes, Lord. We're taking new territory. We can't go into the promised land until we laid on, laid some stuff aside. Faith will not work in an atmosphere of strife and division and offense and unforgiveness. We're laying that aside. We're going to work. We're going to work. Nothing is too hard for you, Lord. Nothing is too, they're not too hard for you. Thank you, Lord. And I want every head bowed, every eye closed. If you're here this morning and maybe you're touched by God and I just want to ask you, if you're here this morning, you're not born again, or, or you, you fell away from God. You, you drifted, the Bible talks about drifting away. Kind of like that um, offense. Nothing just overwhelms us, but it's little by little by little. If you don't deal with something, little by little, you'll find yourself drifting away. If you're here this morning, you say, Pastor, I've drifted away from God. I've drifted away from God, and I want to. I want to come back to Him. I want to come back to Him. Or if you've just been on the fringes and you've never made a commitment to Jesus, nothing, nothing really works in this realm like we, like it can. It doesn't make sense until we come back to the Maker, the Originator, and He He makes life. Life makes sense. A lot of things we don't understand, but life makes sense. Yeah. I want to help people come into the things of God. I believe with all of my heart that nothing in your life that God can't make right. Nothing. I believe everybody can be transformed. Everybody. I don't care what you've done. Jesus, Jesus suffered and died. He died for the whole world, not just for part of the world, not just for the church world. He died for the whole world. And today, you can have a brand new beginning. Would you, would you accept that? I believe, I believe God wants to do something major in your life. Ah, and I realize when we come to the end of ourselves, that's when we see the exceedingly abundantly above all we can ask or think. So I'm going to come back to God today. Father, I pray for everybody listening to me here in this building and wherever this broadcast is going, that they would lay aside every weight now. Condemnation, fear, hurt, and come to the healer. Come to the restorer. Come to the one mm, that can bring them to a place of wholeness again. In the name of Jesus, I rebuke every force, every demonic force trying to keep you in a place of torment and fear. In the name of Jesus, I command it to loose you right now. In Jesus' name, hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Let's all stand, please.